So taking a look at the laws of refraction. So this is where we have a light ray coming from one medium to another, uh, generally from a less dense to a more dense when we're talking about glass. And you can see how the light ray is bending when it changes from one medium to the other. So this is the basic setup for the experiment and we'll have a look at it now in action. All right, so we're going to take a look at a refraction of light. So when it hits a glass block or a glass prism or a different medium, what happens to the light ray? So here we can see that the light ray comes in, hits the medium, and you can actually kind of see it very faintly in the glass here, and then it comes out the other side. Notice a few things. Uh, firstly, there is a what we call a weak reflected ray here. Look, that's just naturally, it's hitting a surface, and for because there's a little bit of reflection with the surface, we get a weak reflected. But I'm just going to ignore that for the sake of, uh, of everything else here, because we're not interested in that ray. We're interested in the ray that comes out here, the emergent uh, refracted ray. Or, sorry, the emergent ray. So here we have an incident ray and an emergent ray. And you'll even notice, just another thing to notice is that they are parallel. So it's actually parallel, but it's, look like, it's like it's almost shifted down when it hit the medium. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to trace the outline of the block. Now obviously, you can be neater than Steve when you're doing this. But I'm tracing the outline here of the block because we'll be using that in a moment. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure uh, and mark a point of incidence. So in this case, I'm going to mark in my incident ray. And you can use a ruler, but I'm going to do it freehand. And I'm going to mark out my emergent ray as well. So I've marked my incident ray and my emergent. And I'm going to lift this away. Okay, And we can see now that we end up with the, the ray obviously going straight across because there's nothing to uh, refract it. And I'm just going to click this machine off for a second. Oops. Another way. There we go. And now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the two rays. So with a ruler or a straight edge, just connect the two rays up. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angle at 90 degrees to the surface where it enters. So I'm going to make a 90 degrees and I'm going to mark in my normal. So Using my protractor, I mark in my normal. And again, Steve's going to be not as neat as you should be when you're trying to do this experiment. Because I'm using big whiteboard markers. There we go. So there's my normal. And I'll mark a little N. So N for normal. My angle of incidence here is going to be always created with the normal. So there's my I. And my angle of refraction, I should have continued my normal on the other side. So I'll just do that now. My angle of refraction when it enters the medium, bear in mind, it's always with the normal as well. So this is my angle of refraction, R. Okay. And in order to verify Snell's law, Snell's law is going to tell us about the refractive index of this material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my angle, I, and I'm going to measure my angle, R, using a protractor. I'm then going to make a table of I and R values and use that to calculate the refractive index of the medium. That's all there is to the experiment. Let's have a look at doing an example. So here we're going to take a look at 2022 uh, question three in the Leaving Cert higher level. And you can see first course, draw a label diagram. No problem. That's the first picture you saw. How do they determine the angle of refraction? Make sure to describe how they trace around the block and all the parts of the experiment. Uh, draw a suitable graph to verify Snell's law. We'll talk about that in a moment and then use it to calculate the refractive index of the gas, or glass. Finally, what would be observed if the angle of incidence uh, was zero? Well, it would just go straight through without deviating. Um, so most of the time, this experiment is going to be just down to that one point uh, drawing a suitable graph. So let's take a look at the graph you need to draw. So here's the graph that you have to draw. You need to draw a graph of sine i against sine r. And our intent here is to get the slope of the graph, which I'll talk about in a bit. So with our previous values, we need to make a table and do a table for sine i against sine r. You will need graph paper, a ruler, and a calculator. Go get them. So here's the data from the table that they gave us originally. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a table of sine i versus sine r. So in order to do that, you're going to need your calculator. Uh, so we make a table. I'll just do that now. Now, how do I do sine i? I turn on my calculator. 
First off, check your calculator is in degrees, okay? If it's not in degrees, it might be in radians, so just make sure to change it to degrees. So we're gonna hit the sine button, and then put in the value sine 30. Sine 30 should give you 0 0.5. Rinse and repeat, do sine uh, 19 for the number below, and I get a big string of numbers. Now you don't need to write them all in, but I would definitely go to at least two or three significant figures. Uh, I'll go to three significant figures because it's just going to help me be more accurate with my, my graph later on. So once you've done that, you're going to repeat that for all the rest of your values. So I'll do that now and then speed it up. So I've now done that where I've inputted all my values. So the next thing to do is to get your graph paper and work out what size graph you're going to make. So I need to take a look and go, what's the biggest and smallest number I'm gonna to go to? Now, if you have a little bit of maths knowledge, you might know that sine uh, only goes from between zero and one. So either way, this is gonna go up just to the number one. So I'm gonna to have to go from 0 0.5 up to almost one, and from 0 0.32 up to almost uh, 0 0.7. Now, I think for this, the easiest thing to do is just to be consistent. So I'm gonna use, uh, counting my boxes across, there is exactly 10 boxes across, you could squeeze it into your copy book if you like to make it nice and big. Uh, but in the exam, I think there's usually less given out in the sheet. So you might as well just use five boxes across and five boxes up. Now, it's not as ideally the size you want it to be. You want to try and make it as big as possible. But if you're, if you're accurate with your plotting, it's not going to matter and you're not going to be docked for it. So if you want to make it 10 up, five across, but I'm going to do five and five. So, and by five and five, I mean I'm going up in point twos. We always start in zero. So grab your ruler and try draw it there for yourselves. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Now, I've got my graph drawn, okay? Now I wanna do, I've done sine i against sine r, okay? Uh, so what I wanna make sure is that I just plot things on the correct axis. So I take my values from before and I'm gonna take a look at plotting them. So. My sine was at 0.5 and 0 0.326 for sine r. So go to, now, students struggle with this. They go, how do I work out where 0 0.326 is? So I'm gonna show a little tip that you can do for anything. If we take a look, okay, uh, just go from zero to the 0 0.2 for a moment. There are 10 boxes there, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, if it's 0.2, I'm gonna divide it by 10 to find out what each tiny box is worth. So each tiny box is worth 0 0.02. Now, I'm trying to get to the number 0 0.326. So I'm gonna take that number and divide it by this number. So 0.326 divided by 0 0.02. And hey presto, I get 16.3. So what's that telling me? It means that I need to go 16.3 little boxes in. So this is 10 boxes. They're gonna go another six and then a little bit of a, a six more. Or sorry, a little bit of that box there. So I'm going to 16.3 there, or what box is in, and I'm gonna go up to 0 0.5 in the sine i axis. So just tracing that up, get about there. Okay, and that's my first point plotted. So just doing that one more time with a different point to show it again. Um, again, I said this is 0 0.2 divided by 10. So each box is worth that much, and that's the same for both axes because I drew the same scale. So here, 0.454, for example, divided by that number gives me 22.7. So basically 23 boxes. So I'm going to go to 23 boxes here. And going up, I can do the same. This number, 0.647, divided by that number again. I'm going 32 boxes. So I'm going 23 boxes and 32 boxes up. And look, as you kind of get better at these, you'll get faster at doing it. But it's definitely going to help you when for people who struggle plotting points. I'm going to plot the rest of the points now. Um, and I'll speed it up. Okay, so there you can see I've got my points plotted. I had to double check so I didn't feel confident. And you can see it's kind of a straight line. Now I'm gonna do a line of best fit. So line of best fit, I wanna force it through the origin, through zero, and I'm gonna try to have equal number of dots either side of the line. Um, I don't have to go through any of the, any of the dots, not necessary, so, but uh, it's okay if you do as well. So let's have a look. Now you should do this in pencil, he says as he does it in pen. Let's just try and make it show up clear in the video. Um, but you can see here, I've got two points up here, two points on this side. I've got three on the left of it and kind of, uh, it wasn't a great line. I probably should have steered it again up a bit higher. But I don't mind making mistakes because that's uh, 
part of how I grow. So, uh, right, I've done my sine i against sine r, which verifies Snell's law. Okay, Snell's law being that the refractive index is sine i against sine r. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope of this to find the refractive index. Now, why does the slope tell me the refractive index? Well, slope of anything is uh, the change in the y-axis over the change in x. So delta y, delta x, change of y over change of x. The y in this case is sine i, which has no unit, by the way. So that's fine to leave with no unit there. And the x is sine r. So in this case, sine i over sine r is telling me, well, hold on, wait a second, that is refractive index. So n is sine i over sine r. So slope is n in this case. We're always coming back to slope in physics. So how do I find the slope of it? Well, I need to pick two points on the graph, right? Now, really important, not two points you've plotted. It has to be two points that are on the line. So I'm going to deliberately never pick points that I've plotted. Now, make your life easy and try to pick nice looking points. So I'm going to say uh, this point here looks particularly nice down there. And I'm going to say another point that looks particularly nice is this point here. Right? Feel free to label them very clearly in your graph. Okay, use a different color if you like as well. That's absolutely fine. How do I figure out what that box is? Well, if I count, that's 10, 20, uh, 25, 26 boxes. So if I want, that's the value 0 0.52 on the X. Because I'm, if you remember, I said every box was 0 0.02 from before. Going up, I've got 2, 4, uh, 10, 20, 30, 37 boxes. So I'm going to say 37 by that number to help me find it, 0 0.74. Now, if you're happy out finding them and you don't need to use that method, that's totally fine and absolutely knock yourself out. Uh, you don't have to show the examiner how you did it. This is 0 0.14 and this is 0 0.2. So I have my coordinates here and I'm going to find the slope. So I actually do that. I would normally say students do that on the piece of paper that you're working on, but just because I want to show you, I'm just going to do it over here on this piece of paper. So, uh, the slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Your y2 I'll take to be the bigger one, so 0 0.74, minus the y value here, 0 0.2, all over the x value, which is 0 0.52, minus the x1 value, which was 0 0.14. Now, now that I have that in, I don't need to do anything special here. I can just plug it into my calculator. So I'm going to say 0.74 minus 0.2 over 0.52 minus 0.14. And hey presto, I get n to equal 1.4205, but he generally accepts it to two decimal places, which is perfectly fine, um, as my refractive index for the glass. A quick look at the mark scheme has told me that the answer was 1.4, which is very acceptable within the, these limits. What would make this more accurate is if I'd drawn it uh, with a better line of best fit, okay? And again, feel free to, like I said, make this bigger. You've way more room uh, vertically than you do the other way. But that's it for finding uh, Snell's Law and the Snell's Law experiment.